I'm very excited to introduce our next two speakers, Philip Areno and Bas Metz. This is another world premiere. As Philip was saying, it's a world premiere because he never does lectures. So already the fact that he does a lecture is a world premiere. But of course, it's a collaboration with Bas and Philip, which is here for the first time discussed in public. And uh, they've had a long, long conversation. I actually met Bas through Philip about two or three years ago uh, and uh, work now more and more together. Philip needs no introduction. He's had an extraordinary exhibition um, at the Serpentine in 2010-2011. Um, his work, actually, ever since the 90s, um, so diversity of media, films, culture, performance, and text has a huge uh, influence. He's had a series of retrospectives at the Kunsthalle Zurich, the Santo Georges Pompidou, the Irish Museum of Modern Art, and also at Bart, which somehow were each different from each other. And for this year's marathon, he proposed a collaboration with Bas Metz, and it actually ties in totally with what Adam Curtis was saying in relation also to Werner Herzog, but it's about dark nature. It's very much about a dark moment of a park in Porto, a post-apocalyptic <laughs> moment, and they're going to talk about the film uh, actually they're working on. Bas Metz specializes in the conception of landscape strategies and also the construction of public space. Starting from a precise reading of the land, his projects reveal an unseen landscape. His office is based in Brussels, and he works on lots of different landscape projects. Uh, the most important one, the Parc des Ateliers in Arles, with Frank Gehry, in collaboration with Maya Hoffmann and the Luma Foundation. In 2008, Bas was awarded the French Prize for uh, Young Landscape Architects. This dialogue between Philip and Bas is the continuation of many architects we've had, actually landscape architects we've had over the last two days in dialogue with artists and architects, Günther Vogt, talking about his dialogues with Olafur Eliasson or Dan Graham, Pascal Cribier in his collaborations with uh, Benone to give two examples. A very, very warm welcome to Bas Metz and Philippe Areno. <laughs> I'm going to do something which I really hate to do, which is making lectures. Um, so the idea really is to, uh, to talk about this new uh, film. So I've been, uh, I've been here, uh, it was last year, to do this uh, exhibition. And since uh, this exhibition took place, I've been thinking about uh, sort of what to do next. And um, some of the ideas were spinning around the notion of uh, automation and automaton. This idea that, um, this idea that uh, to try to think about an exhibition as an automaton or an automation. So uh, what we want to do now, we're going to do now, is to make this histology of the conversation we had together with Bass that uh, became now a film. And um, so CIZ really stands for uh, uh, the word continuously habitable zone which I think that what we've been trying to do together, trying to find a, a place to build. <laughs> and, um, but to go back to, uh, to this idea of automation, um, yeah, thinking about the exhibition as a living organism. And then soon after came this idea of uh, what if uh, an image or an object survive its exhibition, which means that a bit like the Frankenstein novel, uh, the monster leave the castle and get to be living a normal life. So, um, so all these ideas about, uh, uh, yes, creation, the creation of an image that survives its own exhibition or presentation. And, um, and for, w for those who maybe saw the show I did at the Serpentine, there was a film called The Boy from Mars there. And The Boy from Mars was an attempt to link um, an architecture to a, to a film or to say differently, to, uh, to produce a film that would produce its own reality. And um, so I worked at that time with Francois Roche, an architect, and we tried to do a, a, a weird beast, a two-headed beast, mutant, uh, one being the architecture project and one being the film, but one needed the other to exist. So without the film, the architecture was not able to be built, and without uh, the architecture, the film had nothing to... Uh, to uh, to uh, shoot. So uh, the idea of again, after a long night where I was in a bar in Brussels with, with Bass, we came with the idea to, uh, to, to produce something a bit more abstract 
and to link this time a film to a territory. Uh, I don't know if you want to take it from there. Yes, but yeah. So the, the, um, from the beginning it was clear that we were not going to make a movie about a landscape, but that actually the, the landscape could only exist in the movie. That was actually what Philippe asked me to, to help on. And I was quite puzzled by that, because I'm used to making landscapes, and I'm used to people f making photographs of that landscape. But making a, a landscape that would only exist in a movie was something, something very strange. It even became stranger, because it was not one side, but actually we were given five sites in two countries, three uh, allotment gardens in Stuttgart and two bigger territories in, uh, in Porto. And, and I, was, I was a bit lost in the beginning because I, I tried to make a landscape that could be filmed, but actually that was not a question. So, so actually the, the liberating moment was when I just did what I always do, making a precise reading of the territory, trying to, to, to reveal the unseen landscape um, of those sites and really trying to, to come to the essence of those, uh, those five sites. So which we did in a, in a number of, of, uh, of visits, in a number of discussions. And then we had the kind of, um, yeah, we understood those five sites, but then became the next question, how to make one single territory out of five distinct um, sites that are not, not even adjacent uh, to each other and that are in, in, uh, in two different countries. And there again, there was uh, many, many discussions, many, many uh, workshops um, where more and more we were trying to, to combine those sites to, to find a kind of a essential landscape um, made out of those five different sites. And it was, it was quite difficult. We, we, we made a couple of models and trying different, different schemes. And actually a kind of breakthrough came when I understood it was not in plan but in section that we had to work because the section is a lot closer to the sequences of a movie. And, and for example, here you see it on, on underneath out of those five sites, the three in Stuttgart, the two in Porto, we tried to make a kind of exemplary landscape. Exemplary, a kind of archetype landscape that precedes any other landscape, made out of a valley, of a, of a, of a steep hillside, of a planted plateau. And, and so combining the characteristics of those five sites, we tried to make this kind of a exemplary, ideal uh, landscape. From the, the, the section we then made a, a very technical section with the exact uh, um, characteristics of those sites. And, the, the, and that was very interesting because very different from what I normally do. We made a kind of new territory based on that section, not on the plan. And then again, something very strange happened because we decided not to use the five sites, but only one single site. So after having revealed the kind of uh, characteristics of each site, for example, the, the, the valley, we, we, we enhanced this kind of valley feeling, making a, a mineral river. On the, the, the slopes, we made a, a, a vegetal steps to, to, to really see the, the contour lines of uh, the, the hillside. And on the, the, the planted plateau, we made a, a horizontal path, the, um, making the border between the, the, the kind of a void, deserted area and the, the forested area. So we actually tr tried to, to, to reveal the, 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 the landscape of each of these sites. Then since we didn't have five sites anymore, but only one, we tried to reenact those characteristics on one single site. So in a way, our interventions like found the their part. way on one, on one single site. Can I do it again? I like it. <laughs> cool. wow. And the, it was very funny because, for example, the, 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 the riverbed finally found its um, location on top of the hill, which is also flat because that just worked better with the, with the side. And for example, we, we, we took the Stuttgart slopes and tried to find them in Porto, which again, I would never do, and which, was a, which was a kind of um, making it weirder and weirder, and, and, but in a way more consistent, a kind of, in the end it became a kind of a imaginary, exam exemplary landscape. I can show you some pictures of the, the, the site uh, intervention, so unrooting 30 meter high trees to, to, to expose those, those, those roots and, and to, to show how they, 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 the tree actually is anchored in, uh, in the landscape. Or burning 
<laughs> quite a big territory to, to, to reveal a, yet another kind of landscape that wasn't seen, but once it's burned, you, the, 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 something else comes up. Or bringing big machines to, to, to make those horizontal paths and to, to, to abruptly change the, the topography of the, the existing landscape. Or again, using this smoke and this this this, uh, this fire to to uh, and and the, for example, the whole natural stones that we 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 brought to to um, to for for each of those five sites create this kind of a uh, exemplary uh, landscape. And so this is uh, so it's funny because you know <coughs> Bas talks about uh, sites and I talk about sequences, and I think that it's very annoying and. Um, so, uh, so yes, it was uh, in fact six, no, six uh, sites with in fact sequences. So, at the end, yes, we ended up uh, having this really weird uh, construction where you have a bit of a river that we call the mineral river. Then we have the staircase, which became a vegetal staircase. Then we have what we call an inverted to topiary. We'll see pictures of that after. Then we have black plant growing within revealed roots. And then we had the desert made of fade to black plants. So um, those, uh, those different sequences became like uh, yeah, the markers of this territory design you kind of in a weird way. It's a bit like, because uh, you can see that the logic within the land, but you can't really grab the logic. It's a bit when you read uh, Alice in Wonderland, you know that it's not only about having a lot of, um, of, of imagination. There's something behind it. And, uh, and I guess we arrived, which was maybe the idea, the final, uh, I mean, the statement we tried to, uh, to, um, to write together, which was to try to have something that works in two different realms or two different worlds, you know, our physical reality, which is what uh, Garden now is like, you know, uh, acting in, but also the, top plus, the, the, the two plus one world, which is like the world of image and images. Uh, yeah. And, and maybe as, as an anecdote, but, but Philip wanted me only to plant black plants. So we went to do a research of black plants and we found many black plants, but they were not black enough. So during the, 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 the film I was spraying them black, <laughs> which again is very strange to me, but, but, but yeah, makes this kind of imaginary landscape of, um, that, that has a physical reality, but still gives another image. You keep going. Oh, that's my draw, <laughs> my, me making drawings. Um, so yes, after the, the, soon after we, uh, we came out with this, uh, how do you call it, design or schematic, I started to make some drawings in order to uh, produce what you do when you make a film, which is a storyboard. So uh, I made some drawings uh, to give to the, to the uh, art director and the uh, and, uh, cinematographer. So that would be, sorry, I'll go fast. So that would be the root scene. Uh, that would be the in inverted topiary scene. That would be the mineral river scene. That would be, again, the roots. That was the opening shot. And that was another one of his black plants growing within the, the roots of the tree. That was a vegetal staircase. Again, the mineral river. Some drawings. Some, and, uh, and that's uh, the reality of, of, the, of, the sh of the shooting of the film, no? So, which is weird, because that's reality when it's a picture, but it's also a picture that is real. Um, this is uh, one of the scenes. Uh, I'm still currently cutting the picture, so I can't really tell you how it's going to end, but uh, it's some pictures definitely we use in, in the film. This is in the Tutopiary scene, where the camera basically goes down the rabbit hole, like that. This is what became the, the mineral river, which basically the camera moving around 
moving through this, this river, and you can't really understand the scale of it. Um, then you want to speak, you can. And this is a, the desert scene that leads you to this, um, to this blackness. Everything is really dark. That's the staircase, and that the roots where black plant grows between. And that's some pictures of the film, yeah. And maybe what's, what's very interesting is in, in this image is made by a, a, a registered land meter of Portugal, whom we asked uh, two weeks ago to actually go on site and, and record what we actually made as a kind of last image. And so he went on, on site and, and, and very precisely recorded the, the, the different in interventions that we had made on that territory as a kind of physical reality. F physical reality that in the end are fragments of, of an imaginary landscape that tries to be exemplary. And I think what was really interesting both with, with I, mean, I think with everybody involved is that a, a landscape intervention became a set design to then become a film and to then maintain a kind of physical reality on site and, 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 and yeah, ha, has, ha, have a kind of reality on its own except I mean, outside of the, the, the film and the, the whole landscape uh, story behind it. So yes, now, now what's happening to, uh, to the project is that we're going to uh, finish editing and then uh, put the sound. The sound basically uh, is also, uh, we planted microphone into the garden. So the sound is not, is not uh, get through the air, but through the land itself. So the land became basically a big microphone. And, um, and after that, uh, we will go back to the land and, uh, and finish uh, the, the, the garden as you know, a place that can, people may visit. And, uh, so, and at the end, when the film will be presented at Baylor Foundation next year, we will have like the, the coexistence of uh, you know, those two objects, which in, in fact share the same body. Uh, the one that exists in Porto as a kind of heterotopia, uh, kind of a weird fantasy. And, uh, and uh, its uh, image as a film. Um, yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you.